Hello, it's Maggie the Cheshire Crafter here. Now, June was quite a hot month and I didn't feel comfortable quilting at that point, but I have been doing some sewing on my machine, in particular getting used to my new Singer Heavy Duty machine, and I wanted to experiment a little bit with a plique. Now, for a while, I've been wanting to work with Cafe Facet uh, fabric, and particularly the cool colours. And, and I wanted to make a gift for a friend that will be a lap size throw. And I wanted the fabric to be the main feature of this. But I also like to challenge myself to do something I've not done before. So in this, I'm using the orange peel design. Uh, and there were quite a few challenges in this. I'll talk you through them and perhaps what I did and then what I might do next time if I was doing it again and what hints and tips I'll give you along the way. First of all, should we come into the kitchen and take a look at the fabric choices? For this quilt, I've selected a range of fabrics in the greens and blues and purples range, so the cool colours. And as you can see, I've got six very different fabrics here, but they all include those colours with a bright pop of pink at times just to lift it. I'll put the details of the names of these fabrics in the details below. And for my border I've got these great banana leaves shooting up and it picks up all the colours. They're all by Cafe Facet. Because the fabric is such good quality, the acrylic ruler is slipping on it and I need to turn this round. I find I can't cut all the way round it with my right hand. This is where a rotating cutting mat would really help. The other thing I suggest is if you're finding it difficult, trace around it with an erasable pen and then use scissors or the cutting ruler. What I don't want to do is cut through too many layers and make mistakes because this fabric's expensive. I'm just cutting two at a time here and I'm finding that the rotary cutter is going through that easily. To cut four of the petals to make a flower and you need to cut eight of these to make use of the negative space. This is the space that goes round the petal. I like to pin them together so I've got two petals in this one and one negative space in this one and I've pinned them together and I'm just going to store them in these zip seal locks bags. If there's a piece that you really want to preserve fold the fabric in half and use the marks on the ruler and fussy cut around that. I'll just get one piece like that but I don't want to lose that. It's gorgeous isn't it? As I get more confident, I find it easier to cut four at a time. I've just folded the fabric over. And when you're pinning, pin right sides together. Now you can see I'm very close here. I'm not going to cut any material. I'm going to sew these on the material before I cut the petals. I used my Singer hand cranked sewing machine because I was working quite late at night and I didn't want to disturb my neighbours. I'm going to cut round the edge of this and snip these edges close to the seam line and then because I've got a curve I'm also going to snip that seam line so it will turn out on the other side well like so. Don't go through. This is with a blunt edged pen. 
pair of scissors just make a few snips going close to but not going through that stitch line and then on the reverse I just want to pull the fabric layers apart and snip through to create a turning space through just like that this little one is a test piece for me to try applique on my new machine For the background I'm losing this lovely turquoise colour and I've cut 5 inch squares, I've cut 120 of these. While I'm using the walking foot to use applique, I'm using this little plastic runner here, this one, and it's just running alongside the edge of the fabric, and that way I'm getting the right distance each time away from the edge. When you get to the end, leave the needle in position and lift the presser foot up and pivot on the needle and then lower your presser foot again and then start stitching. The trick is to take it very slowly and just to ease the fabric around those curves. I've got 120 of these to do, might be some time. So the individual blocks will look like this. And I've sewn them together as a four patch to look like a flower. Four petals together. going to create 30 of these in random designs and I'm going to make up the quilt as five blocks by six blocks. Iron them on the reverse and press the seams down in the way that they need to lie then turn it over and press on the front. I've just laid it out on my bed, five blocks across and six down. And what I want to do with this is just to make sure I've got the randomness right and I've got the colours moving around the quilt correctly. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to mark it with um, post-it notes, uh, one to six, and I'm going to mark which is the top. And I've checked it in grayscale. I'm quite happy with that. And I've got a spare block. I'll do something with that too. I'm now going to sew them together in rows across and then 
sew the rows together going down. Sewing my rows together, this central seam is the most important one to meet. And where I can, I'm nesting my seams together. However, because I've turned the blocks to get the pattern evenly distributed, they don't always nest. Just meet them as best you can. It's very evident I need to change my nail polish, don't I? Sorry about that. Completed the rows. Make sure that you've still labelled them. So you've sewn the rows together, press them and press these seams to the right on the evens and to the left on the odds and that way your seams will nest when you come to join them together. Match those seams together at those four points first and then go to the central point and meet those seams at when sure I've got a quarter of an inch I've moved my needle over I've now got it to the extreme right so here's the topper before adding the borders I'm going to add a separate video showing the borders because I'm using a directional print and there are different considerations for that. This is very difficult to iron and I have to say it wasn't easy to do. For a first, for a first attempt, I think the effect of using the cafe for set fabric has worked. Well, let me show you what it looks like once I've added those borders. Obviously the borders are sewn on right sides together and still with a quarter inch seam allowance but I've actually tried to match up so that they look similar and so I've put this large red and pink stem towards the top of the quilt and balanced it either side. Uh, there's not as much of this in the header and footer I don't think. The other thing is when I turn it over you'll see that the clouds give a direction so it shows that I've got it the right way up. And I do recommend that you pin. As you can see, I've sewn this once and had to unpick it because I was going astray. Well, I've sewn it and I've just come to the ironing board to iron it and I've realised that this piece is on upside down. Now, it might not be obvious to you because the leaves look correct, but actually the clouds are the wrong way up. I should have the dark part of the cloud on the top so I'm going to have to unpick that seam and unpick this and redo it it's really annoying don't do what I've just done and here's the finished topper with the borders added and you can see I paid particular attention in getting those borders in the right orientation. This now measures. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please like and subscribe so that you get notifications when I'm uploading and so that you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. This is Maggie, the Cheshire Crafter. Come back and see me soon, won't you? Bye.